how we go. Anyway, Neil, this is an absolute pleasure. Uh, it's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Frank and with that metal station. And today I'm having a chat with Neil Grusky, guitarist um, for Pray for Sunday, who recently released their debut self-titled EP December 28th. But you have been around in the music industry for quite a while. So very um, cheers for making time to have a chat with me, Neil. Thank you. Pleasure and an honor to be here. No, it's an absolute pleasure, man. I, I really, I'm really digging this EP, man. But can you briefly tell me a little bit about your career prior to Pray for Sunday for those that may not know who you are as well, musician-wise? Okay. Well, uh, how much do you know about my past? Uh, I know a little bit about you playing in Takara and that, and that's about it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm very keen right, to know well, a little bit about your backstory as well. Okay. Well. Wow then you're, you're, you're one step ahead of everybody because no one knows. I mean, not very many people know. So um, um, let's see. I'll give you a little bit about Takara. How's that sound? We'll start yeah. with Takara. Yeah, yeah. So I started Takara many moons ago. And uh, Jeff Scott Soto, who you may or may not know, sang on the first four albums. Um, Jeff was a friend of mine at the time. It was only a favor. A lot of people were confused about his involvement, but the involvement really was more of a favor than it was anything else at the time. We, you know, we did four albums. We did three studio albums and a best of. And I might uh, add to this that many people who, who are familiar with Takara will be glad to know that I have a, a four song demo that we did prior to the first album, Eternal Faith, that came out that I'm remaster and I'm going to master and I'm going to release. It's actually four songs off eternal faith that actually the, the sound quality is amazing. They're Jeff. It's Jeff and I like we're 22 and 23 years old and he just sounds like amazing. Anybody who listens to Jeff will know what his voice and how great a voice he had. Um, anyways, so I'm going to release that soon actually on streaming platforms. Um, so anyways, I did Takara, we did, you know, Eternal Faith, Taste of Heaven, Blind of Paradise, and then Eternity, Best Of. Then um, we went on our ways. Jeff decided, you know, he had other projects that he had more interest in, in doing. So, you know, his time helping me out was, came to an end, unfortunately. Um, I did um, a fifth album called Perception of Reality, which, um, you know, did pretty well. It wasn't great, but did pretty well. I, and then took a little time off, reformed Takara. Biggest problem is, uh, you know, we'd gone through a lot of changes. People came and went. And then we did the, the final Takara album for that time period, which was called Invitation to uh, Forever, which was a really good album. Then I took some time after that and I, you know, kind of reevaluated where I wanted to be, what my desire was. And I, I you know, I found that more modern music was really something that I was more into than what I had been doing before. Yep. So I kind of started working on a lot of new songs, some that were Takara-esque and some that were more, what you could say now, Pray for Sunday-esque. And I decided, you know, Takara was great, but it was time to do something different. And um, thus the birth of Pray for Sunday, I started working with a producer named um, Peter and Peter and I started demoing the songs. And um, then along the way, the singer Tony came in and he started working with us. He started writing and laying down vocals. And, you know, we demoed about 10 songs. Of those 10, the five that you hear on EP, then we have another, I don't know, 15 songs that we're working on that we're going to probably release further on down the line. But, you know, the essence of everything is really just a move in a more modern direction because Tark Takara was great. And, um, and you know, there's not a moment that I, I you know, I, I, I always think fondly of my time in doing that. And there's always a possibility it could happen in the future or maybe not, I, I don't, I can never say, but I just know right now I'm, I'm pleased with what's going on. I think the more modern sound is, lends itself more to, what I like to do really, you know, the modern bands. And it'd be um, great too, after spending all those years with Takara as well, instead of trying to keep that going, coming at a new project, Pray for Sunday, with a whole new fresh set of ears, kind of new energy as well, to, to, to create something absolutely. new, not into the, the bounds of the previous projects you were in. 
Absolutely. That was it. You know, I think the freshness of it, the enthusiasm of it, um, I think that really lent to the excitement of it, the inspiration writing wise, you know, doing something new. I mean, anytime anybody does anything new, I think there's always a freshness to it. Yep. Thank you know, you. working with new people who really didn't ha know anything about my past, which was actually kind of good. You know, I mean, there's always a time where you want people to say, hey, you know, I actually did something before. But in this case, I was kind of like, you know, we're just going to do something new. You guys don't have to worry about what I did or didn't do. You know, the people who know will know and who don't will hear this because I didn't need to base this on anything because I think that we, we did had its own identity and it didn't need to be tied in. I think a lot of the thing with my past with Takara's there was always a tie in, you know, with Jeff singing on the albums and his time with Ingbe and everybody. And then having my friend, Bob Daisley, who played with Ozzy, who's an Australian native, by the way. Yes. Um, Sydney, somewhere in Sydney. I can't remember the, the suburb. Anyways, so it's nice to do something different with people who, a fresh start, a fresh enthusiasm, a fresh identity. You know, I think. So, so you know, did you meet up with Shad first, or was it um, you and Shad kind of start laying down some notes, or was it um, did you meet Tony, or how did the timeline with all that go um, forming the band? First, Shad came along about a year ago, um, yeah. really long after we'd recorded pretty much everything and written everything that okay. we for the CP. So Shad came on a little later. Um, but so we actually really haven't done any work with him writing wise. We've done everything else. We've played, rehearsed, everything you can do during COVID, I guess you could say. Um, so no, we're looking forward to that. I mean, obviously like every, every artist says, you know, everybody's looking forward to when this ends, right? So we can all do shows and things like that, which is the one thing Takara never got to do was really do shows. So, but anyways, to answer your question, no, Shad came along a little later. Shad's roots go back to Iowa. He grew up with, um, you know, Corey Taylor, the Stone Sour, the Slipknot people. They're all from basically the same area. So, so Shad is kind of comes from there, and the singer is also from um, the Midwest. He's from Illinois. I'm the only one from California. So yeah, that's that's our that's our history with Shad. Basically, kind of came on at the very end, but um, he's been very integral in a lot of ways, more ways than I can even say between editing some of the, the video that we did, we did a teaser video and obviously being in the video that we did and playing on that, no, he didn't play on that song. He played actually on the second, the next single we released, which is called Broken Hearted Man. Yeah, oh, that's a nice track, that one. Can you tell yeah, me a little oh, bit about it? that track? Yeah, yeah, I, feel, I, I, feel, I was cranking this flat out yesterday. I was up early this morning. Yeah, I got up about 2.30 this morning for another interview with Marty from The Lonely Ones. And um, yeah, well, I've really, I, seriously, I've really been digging this EP and that Broken Hearted Man, that's, I enjoyed it. And as you're talking about the musical voicings in it, it's not the lyrics, but the musical voicings and the, the notes and just your, your musicianship. I'm like, dude, this guy's played yeah. before. So I had to look into what you'd kind of done yeah. before as well. So, and as you mentioned, Broken Heart of Man, that was a track that stuck in my head for some reason. I don't know whether I had one of love those days song. or weeks, but beautiful track, man. Thanks, man. I love that song. I'm really happy that you love that song too. It, it was actually, incidentally, one of the first songs that I wrote when I decided that I would put Takara on hold indefinitely. Yep. And indefinitely meaning I can't predict the future, like whatever happens, happens. Um, but this was one of the first ones that I thought, you know, the way this song is coming out, I really think that this is the first step. And the song um, evolved quite a bit. There's a lot of a lot of growth from the initial idea to one of recording and even during the recording process, because there's a middle part where Tony's just singing and there's some orchestral stuff kind of going on. There's actually, originally there was actually some instruments there, but I, I it's actually the first song I really myself, all by myself produced it. Yeah. And I had made a lot of decisions on that song on how I wanted it to be. It's still really not even done. There's actually so much more I could have <laughs> done, but time and finances, but I think as, as the band moves forward and we get more momentum and obviously more finances, I think we'll be able to do more, you know? 
Yeah. And, you know, that was another thing is with Takara, and I said this in another interview where somebody asked me what I thought my biggest mistake in a past was, and that was not having a producer. With this this guy, Peter, we worked with, was just, um, he was a very talented guy, extremely talented. And in the past, with, what's that? Peter Strzelecki, sorry. Yeah, Strzelecki, yeah. yeah. Very talented guy. So, you know, working with him, we were able to do a lot of things that I could never do before um, in terms of dynamics and production with the songs and his overall ideas and my ideas. And when I worked with Jeff, it was different. Um, he was just the kind of guy that would hit play and record and go, and that was it. And wasn't a lot of thought. I think that's one of the things that the Dakar albums lacked is a producer, some thought. But anyways, back to Broken Hearted Man. Um, I really like that song. It's very dynamic. I think that, um, you know, one of the things about the songs, and Tony will tell you, the singer, he likes to write everything with meaning. So that song has a meaning to him in terms of what it's about, the content. I wrote the lyrics and the music pretty much for Don't Let It End. And that's my own meaning. Um, it's just about loss and grieving, really. Um, but, you know, people take those songs and interpret them however they like, just like Broken Hearted Man. Broken Hearted Man is actually about his brother and overcoming addiction and things like that. Um, but again, that's another song that you can interpret how, how you know, how you like. It's, it's an open, they're all songs are out there open for open for interpretation. Yeah, he's, but, got, um, an, yeah. he's got an amazing voice, Tony, a, a voice that kind of sits with you. At some points, I'm like, man, he has that kind of um, that uh, Chris yeah. Cornell vibe at points, but then he's just got this unique <laughs> voice of his own. Yeah, just a couple of points I've, yeah. I've noticed, just the, the, the range and the, the timbre at a couple of points. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, just that the, he can hold a, a presence, if you know what I mean. He, I really enjoyed it, and yeah, the way he sang. Great. He's a great singer. He, he's he's he's. He's a natural. He really is. He's, he reminds yeah. me a lot of Jeff in a lot of ways because he's just, it's so easy for him to sing and it's so easy for him to write. I mean, we could be somewhere and he can just start throwing lyrics and melodies on things. And I'm like, did you just come up with that? He's like, yeah, I just came up with it. It's no big deal. I'm like, yeah. are you kidding? Let me get my tape player. This is too good. I mean, he's, we've, he, we've written so many things where he just throws things down and I was like, did you just come up with that? He's like, yeah, you know, I was just fooling around and I'm, and Chad and I are looking at each other like, where'd this guy come from? You know, what a what what a planet and the you know atmosphere did he just drop off of? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's nice. He's very spontaneous. It's nice. He's very yeah. talented. Such a natural singer. And it'd be good for for you to have these songs, as we're saying. That's something that you kind of worked on and coming to to Chad and Tony and, and filling them out and working these tracks on this EP as well. It kind of would have been good for you to go, oh, this is my vision kind of coming to fruition as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, we, yeah, because it's like three years or so of in the making because there was so many things that had happened along the way yeah. and you know how life is. Oh, yeah. So when did you start kind of getting in there and working on this EP? Because it came out late last year. When did you kind of start making it? Um, I think we'd been working on it for about a year. Yep. You know, not continually, obviously, because we could have yeah. knocked it out. But, you know, I think it'd probably been about a year we spent on it. Um, maybe a little longer, because I started working with Peter before I met Tony. Yeah. And we had... And then Tony came along and things kind of got in high gear, but Peter had a lot of other projects. So obviously we had to, we had to organize our time between whatever he was doing. Cause he also has his own, his own thing and other projects and on and on and on. And then, you know, everybody has schedules and, you know, so in the process though, and I will tell you this between you and I, and not between you and I, because everybody's seen it. We got a ton more songs that are easily, easily as good as this, if not better. And I say if definitely better there's some really great stuff i mean these songs i think are really good and are are but there's some stuff i'm telling you like it's going to be amazing as long as we're in the right place in the right studio the right producer because during this year of putting this together i was writing a lot of stuff yeah. and tony was putting lyrics to it and we were just kind of like you know recording it just rough demos and there's just so much stuff i mean we're talking right now already of you know, following up because Broken Hearted Man will be in the next single. 
yep. trying to follow up that or following up with merry-go-round depending on how much um how much interest merry-go-round has yeah and the, the single i've got to mention this the film clip come out february 15th that don't let it end as well so it would have been this probably would have been grateful to kind of get in and do a film clip considering the way the world has been and i'll notice not many bands can kind oh, of I get know. in there and do clips together exactly yeah and that was an issue too i mean you know doing the video with the way things are i mean we were yeah as you could see if you've watched the video we were in yeah. a riverbed here in la so it was wide open so i was like okay you know as long as you know everybody kind of keeps their distance we should be good well we were i don't think anybody got sick and um, now i've had my shots hopefully hopefully the other guys will be okay at some point they haven't but i i've gotten mine so Hopefully we can do more, you know, I'm, I'm all for being safe, but I'm also would like to continue to get things done because I think this time away, it kind of levels a playing field for smaller bands like us. Yeah. As opposed to bigger bands because they can't tour. So we all are on the same, you know, we're all existing in the same place. Yeah. Well, I chatted to, um, I, can't even, I, didn't fuck, I was chatting to someone the other day about this, another musician, and he was saying that, you know, now's the time for bands like yourselves and, these exactly. bands to kind of, if you want to lay down the work and get some work out there, we're kind of all on a level playing field. So instead of sitting around in your rooms or whatever, all bummed out, it's like lay down some work, work as much exactly. as you can, put it out there. You know, I've, I've spoken to other artists, as I mentioned, like, that have put a ton of material out there. Look, yeah, I've just released this, but I've had nothing else to do through 2020. So I've got another album ready to go after yeah. this has had its run. You know, and there's aspects to this. Number one, there's a lot of people at home who, for a multitude of reasons, are at home, whether they're working from home or they're unemployed or God knows. So it gives a lot of people the opportunity to, you know, have something to enjoy, whatever that is, music or movies or whatever you want to watch. But also for, again, it's kind of self-serving, but for bands like us, it gives us the opportunity to you know, to, to, to take a step forward against, you know, all these bigger bands, because they're kind of limited right now. They're not really releasing albums. Some are, some are, but they're not really touring. Some are holding off. Some are just releasing singles. Um, so I think it's a good opportunity for a lot of people to take advantage of this. And my first thought when this happened within the first month is like, wow, we, sh we need to get this thing done. Yeah. I mean, that was really my first thought. And I started pushing hard for us to get this all together. And I'm just glad it, it came together finally because it was it was dragging it was a little slower than i would have liked i mean to car albums were easy because we would just record them and they would just get released bam bam and it was there was never a problem but for some reason other this ep dragged so much slower than anything i'd ever done and it was so frustrating for me so it's it's really nice that it's finally out and it seems like people are, are really digging it which is really nice you know and i'm i'm you know and it's a good time Daffy's for people to check out that. music because like not everyone likes to sit around right. like Netflix, check out Netflix or whatever. I'm just down to music. I listen to right. so much different music. I went and bought records. I went and spent a whole heap on merchandise and things like that because I'm a big um, supporter of actually buying physicals and buying digital copies and buying music from the nice. nice, especially in this time because, you know, bands like yourself, as we've mentioned a few times, you can't play live. And for the local industry and bands like yourself, playing live is a big part of connection and reaching fans. You play up on stage, right. they come in not necessarily to see you guys, but then they see you and they're like, fuck, I love that band. Go over and say good day mm. to Neil sitting behind the merch stand and you're like, and buy some CDs and mm. shit. And that's how you make connections. And we haven't been able to do that in 2020, but in 2021 now, it's still getting there but that doesn't mean people can't check out the local scene buy albums no. music, and really support no. the scene and you know spotify is great i fucking say this all the time but spotify doesn't pay the bills at the end of the day and you know i'm a big firm believer of it's great to get your music out there i can say this because i'm in the media that i believe people should be buying music as well i don't want people to forget what a the joy it is to grab an album or an ep oh, yeah. do a whole ep 
I put this EP in and it blew me away. I went back again and that broken hearted man, as I said, stuck out to me. But I'm sure when I play it again next time, I'm going to have another track stick out at me. You know what I mean? Listening to yeah. that. Joy. Definitely. Definitely. And, and that's a good sign. That That's, you know, that's, as an artist, that's what you like to hear. And, you know, there's a lot of layers and aspects of this that yeah. you might not hear the first time because I did spend some time with some of the guitar parts. And I layered my things I hadn't done on Takara. So I tried some different things. I also solo a lot less, um, which is fine. I don't think anybody really seems to care because it's really about the song. For me personally, it's about the song. I love the solo. But there's layers. There's, you know, dynamics to this. I think that that um, that you'll pick up as you listen to it more. You know, it's, you know, I've listened to it a few times in a row and I was like, wow, this really came out good. And I don't like to listen to my own music very much. That's just not my thing. But usually because you write it and you play it and you hear it so many times, you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't hear it again. But every once in a while, you know. And that's where we've been good having that... Peter come on board as well. Instead of you having to put on your producer hat, you've got Peter doing it for you as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did, you know, what happened was Peter was really, really great, but we had, we had towards the end of the session, we had some, um, I think we had some directional conflict because yeah. there's certain ideas, Peter being such a strong writer, he had a certain vision for certain things and I had a different vision. And we also, I think, had a lack of understanding about what his role as a producer was. I think that he was different than anybody I worked with because he believed in his role that it was basically as a producer that I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do and you're gonna do it. <laughs> and maybe once in a while, I'll consider your ideas. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's and um, it was a little tough because I had some ideas he didn't like he didn't like them and then later on if I pushed hard enough I would get them and then he would tell me oh they're so good I really like them and I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> we had a little problem but he's so creative like no matter what I have so much respect for everything he did and how talented this guy is it's just silly and yeah. if we could work together it would be amazing but it's just it's so difficult so yeah. anyways to tell you the story i took we had a remix he did a mix on it i didn't like the mix tony and i didn't like the mix we remixed it but in the process of remixing it i reproduced broken hearted man because i had a vision for what i wanted so there was definitely some changes to it that he probably wouldn't recognize or hasn't i don't know if he's heard it yet he may have so it's kind of a combination of him producing it and me producing it um yeah, and ultimately it was your vision too at the end of the day too. And oh yeah. Oh, and definitely. you're probably and glad Tony, you do it, done it too because that track Broken Hearted Man, as I mentioned, was a track that stuck out for me as well. And so that's know, awesome. It, it paid that's off. Awesome. That's awesome. I'm so glad you like it. I'm so glad. It's, uh, thanks, Neil. You know, um, yeah. I, I haven't heard anybody really tell me how much they like it. You're the first one. So that makes me that makes it all worth it to me. Most people are like, oh no, don't let it end. That's it. That's the song. And I'm like, okay, that's a good song. But what do you think about Broken Hearted Man? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, that was the track um, that stuck in my head um after I finished nice. playing it. And yeah, it's a great track and I will be going back to that one and playing that again for some reason. It's just nice. that track just bloody really connected to me and just stuck in my head as well. Nice. Saying, done well with it. So what do you, what do you, you think? Peter? You done well. You done the right thing going back on it, Neil, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I had to do I had to I had to jump a few hoops to make that thing happen the way I wanted. Um, yeah. It was interesting how it came together. Um, we'll just say that. I mean, there was, I had to definitely, you know, you have to go sometimes the extra mile when you believe in something and the extra mile and effort to, to make it right. Whether, no matter what you do in life, if you're, you have a job or you're, you have a project of some type and you realize, oh man, I'm going to have some extra effort, but it'll be right at the end. And that's kind of what this kind of came to is I had to make a decision at some point where like, you know, this is going to require some effort, but I'm down with that because I, I have a feeling this song will come out really nice. And that's, that, for me, that's what it's all about is a great song. I mean, with the Takara thing albums, you know, the first couple albums, a lot of the fans tell me to this day that they're classic albums and some of their favorites of all time. And some of their favorites of Jeff's and Jeff's done, I don't know, over a hundred albums easily in his career. So to hear that, that's what I want to hear. I want to, I want to know that these songs will have longevity. These people will be go back to these albums in 10 or 15 or 20 years. And they're going to still tell me, Hey, you know what? We love this album still. That to me is all worth it. It's not even about the money. 
you know, the yeah. notoriety. It's just knowing that people just just love the song so much. Like I have albums I still listen to that I think are amazing, not mine, but other people's. And you know, that's that's what makes it all worth it for me personally at the end of the day. It's not the notoriety, it's not the money, it's just knowing that people have acclimated to these songs in such a way that, you know, they just hold these things so dear that, you know, and they want to know all the stories and all the stuff, you know, I've been down this road. That's why I know all these, these sort of, I'm saying all of these things to you because I've heard all these things. So yeah. Yeah. No, and felt them. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah that, that's it. No, it's cool. Came out really well. And as the, the net and the phones drop everywhere on us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on. I my phone hold on a second you gotta open this thing up again <laughs> i'm lucky i don't have a phone now <laughs> oh yeah. yeah you are lucky hold on i think i can let's see pull this thing up hold on hold on hold on here it is okay okay sorry okay no, sorry. no don't be sorry man no no don't be sorry it's fine. No, I'm, just, I'm just running, running errands i had some work to do today so i'm it's like out otherwise i'd be at home and do this on my computer and would be a million times better by no, the way no. if you like working hearted man there's some really nice takara songs that i think you would really enjoy as well so be sure to look them up on youtube or wherever you go spotify uh, i will i will man and for sure yeah. this has been an absolute pleasure neil we're going to sign out before oh, i yeah. do i always chuck right. in last word shout outs or any thank yous or anything i may have missed you'd like to add in there Man, um, well, first of all, shout out to you. Thank you so much for giving me your time and your interest and in really digging the stuff. That means everything to me. It makes my day, honestly. And, you know, shout out to Stephen Nathan, who does um, our radio PR, and Sean O'Dell, who does our print PR. I don't know which one of them. I think Stephen got a hold of you, probably. Shauna. I don't know, Shauna did. Shauna. Shauna. Cool. Shauna. Oh my. Shauna's the best. I don't even, I, I mean, there's no mountain high enough to put her at the top of. She's just amazing. Um, and that's it. Shout out to the guys and everything. And I, and I really hope that, um, you know what? I hope I make it to Australia. It'd be really great to get down. I've always wanted to get down there. So do you live in Sydney area? No, I'm in Adelaide. I'm in Adelaide. You'd love it down here in Australia. Oh, you're in Adelaide. Oh, that's yeah, where yeah. Bob is, I think. Yeah, about, I think um, where... about three hours out of Adelaide on the Mighty Murray River in the country, right in the little town called Bringa. Beautiful. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. The Outback, I believe they call it, right? Kind of, or no? Yeah, the Outback. Said I should be a big shot